Hello and good evening. Welcome to the Sociology Staff Room. I'm Katie Tyler and my guest today is Karen Midwinter, who's going to talk to us about um, the Stretch and Challenge. Um, I know you've got a wealth of experience. First of all, thank you for um, spending your evening speaking to me. It's very exciting. Thank you, mm -hmm. Katie. Oh, thank, thank you. And Karen, you just really, I mean, obviously you've got 10 years experience within sort of the, the management structure, so head of social, sociology, and then obviously more recently a director of the social sciences. So you've got sort of a breadth of knowledge and also been teaching sociology for 15 years yourself. I know we've just had a conversation prior to, to recording, but, you know, also got a great career within the media as well. That's sort of impacted in your understanding of, of the world of sociology. But what I'm looking at brain today is really stretch and challenge uh, and what that means and how we can use that in the classroom. I know uh, that you've got a wealth of experience within that. Um, but first of all, what does, you know, so going straight into it, what does stretch and challenge look like mean to you? Because obviously it's a word that's banded around quite a lot, stretch and challenge your students. Um, I know that there's been sort of discussion more recently about moving away from differentiation and moving towards, I think, sort of adaptable learning is something that people have been talking about. But yeah, what does stretch and challenge mean to you as a classroom teacher, as well as obviously a director of, of the Faculty of Social Sciences? Okay, so I teach in a grammar school. So for us, we are really trying to stretch and challenge all of the students. There will be some students who can go further with that and, and they will normally kind of, um, will identify them quite early on. I think it's always really about trying to hook them into the subject and really engage with the subject and really enjoy the subject. And I think that that's once once they're they're really interested then it, it's certainly a lot easier to to stretch and challenge them um so for us we are aim we are aiming for a stars and uh we we get about probably about 30 percent a stars at the moment obviously we'd like that to try and be higher um but i think that all students really are capable are capable of that so we so we're really just sort of trying to get them to to um you know engage with the subject and just go that little bit further that little bit deeper um beyond the textbook beyond the curriculum and really to just develop a, a love of the subject and a love of sociology as well as aiming for those top grades as well yeah and i suppose they sort of go hand in hand don't they so that love of subject as well as obviously aiming for those grades which just sort of seems like obvious but obviously sometimes it isn't you know like you sort of focus on what, what bit is that the chicken egg what comes first is it the sort of the academic bit or the love for learning like and i think you know i think it's the love of learning but personally and i think once they've got that they mm -hmm. can sort of go further with it. but um you mentioned two things one is like how you identify those students and the other thing was obviously you know it's important to give them that love of learning to hook them in so i sort of want to deal with the, the sort of the second bit that you said which is the sort of hooking in the mean and giving them that love of learning what sort of things do you do then as a sort of faculty as a subject teacher increase that sort of love of learning in, so in order to stretch and challenge those students so i think there's there's a few different areas going on one is in lessons itself and then the other um is to do with outside of lessons developing their independent um, study skills and directing them towards some of those super curricula. So within lessons, I think, and you know, sociology is so endlessly interesting, isn't it? It's really about trying to bring it to life for them, really about connecting to contemporary issues, so whatever is going on in society, and linking the theory um, and the textbook, you know, the curriculum, the, the syllabus stuff to to what's going on. And I, and I think that certainly brings it a lot to life. We, as you do, um, also get speakers in. So depending on the topic that we are um, doing, I would ask, uh, we've had Professor Diane Ray, we've had Professor Louise Archer for the education topic. So to, again, to bring the sociologists and the studies and the theory that we're learning to bring that to life as well. I think that's um, really important. Within lessons, it would be the question the students and talking to the students and kind of bringing out and drawing out their interests and um, kind of sort of developing their analytical and, and evaluative skills through, through questioning, stimulus questions, um, as I say, and sort of links to, to contemporary, contemporary issues to, to really get the students thinking and applying their sociology. So we would look at whatever's gone in, like today with the, um, the, the Met police officer who, who's just been found guilty, we would look at examples like that. 
um, uh, Grenfell Tower. You know, I think that's the great thing about sociology, isn't it? You've, you've got all this, this stuff in the textbook, but every single year we're linking those examples to different contemporary issues, um, which I think just makes it really interesting for the students. Yeah, definitely. And obviously, I know you outside the classroom we've connected about sort of um, or outside this podcast is connected about sort of collaborating with with you and other local teachers. Um, I think that's really, really important. But I also know that you've got your sort of passion for sociology is infectious. So I think, you know, obviously you might not say that about yourself. Um, obviously, there's the, the stretch and challenge and, you know, incorporating stuff outside the classroom, which is sort of getting guest speakers to come in and get them to research looking at contemporary material. But I think it sort of starts as well with with without putting too much pressure on the teacher, but there is an element, it, it, you can't take away from that, that if you're interested and you're passionate, which I know you are, it does become inf infectious. The students want to take that on. And I've, I've definitely seen that from talking to you. Like, I think we can sort of talk and talk and talk about sociology and then you bring your own interest. And I think the students take that on and, and embrace that as well. I think there's something to be said for that, that sort of role modeling. <laughs> important and then those students who are really interested and you know they will come in in the morning and, and they will say miss did you see such and such you know have you seen this documentary or did you see this on instagram or did you read this and and that's you know that's brilliant that's what we want um i've i've found that that's perhaps i don't know how you how whether you found it it not as much the last year or so and that's an impact of the pandemic um yeah. but certainly previously to, to that there would be lots of engagement with what the students were kind of sort of mm -hmm. themselves choosing to read and engage with outside of school and i'm now finding maybe they need a little bit more direction to where to find those documentaries um you know or, or what to kind of read and what to look at in podcasts and those sorts of things but certainly when when they are doing it and engaging with it and then they come in and talk to me or i'm talking to them about things that i've seen and read i think i think that's right i think that's part of it i think that's really 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 important isn't it and those students who maybe are going on to to university to do your subject to do sociology to do criminology or something related to that i think it's really important to have those conversations with those students as well and to start that really early in year 12 as well yeah yeah definitely early into us so just you said that um about that i'm glad you said that because i thought that was just me i feel like i'm going on a slight segue of the conversation but sort of one i suppose one of my questions is like what are the limitations of stretch and challenge and obviously you know we've spoken um about the pandemic in the past and i think there's something i don't know it's something that i thought oh is that just me that's felt that um but yeah that sort of i suppose what maybe is a barrier to that might be risk taking and i'm not sure how how much has that been because of the the pandemic? You know, to be able to sort of stretch and challenge those so students. I wonder if they sort of want to sort of remain a little bit in their comfort zone a little a little bit because of the missed learning. I don't know. I don't, what would you say? Is yeah. that, I mean, I know yeah, that's I think slight, I've been, has that impacted on that or not? I think I have seen it. I've been trying to sort of work out what, what I think mm -hmm. it is, but I think I have seen that in in the last year or so. Um, yes de definitely a little needing a little bit more encouragement and um I, d I don't know if it's almost a little bit of numbness to to polit to what's going on there, there was so much in the pandemic so previously to the pandemic i'm constantly saying to students have you read this have you seen that you know we i use it like a twitter feed and i'm sending them articles and we're updating contemporary issues and all those sorts of things all the time and i just wonder if everybody during the pandemic a little bit was a bit like oh, actually I've, I've had enough of all these different viewpoints and and things you know that are kind of going around on the internet and that sort of thing and and i think perhaps there's not as much engagement um mm. or or there's engagement with different places so now the students are mainly using TikTok, um so they're getting their information from different places but yes i i think that um we definitely maybe need to be working a little bit harder at the moment since the pandemic to direct them towards the reliable sources and and reliable places where they can get information and sort of teaching them also how to to, to fact check and and really think about what they're looking at as well yeah definitely like a bit more sort of i suppose it comes back from the teachers sort of guiding them in the right direction rather than the students always bringing it to us um maybe more so than we had to be one of there's an element of that sort of media saturation that's going on where they've been bombarded yeah. with lots of information and like you said maybe a bit desensitized from that or a little bit numb i think is the word you use from it and so it's yeah. sort of really yeah. like it. and obviously sociology's had a bit of a 
uh, I suppose a hope high profile within the social media for a while I said oh finally we're, we're fashionable as a subject um despite the fact that it's been around for a sort of couple of hundred years or nearly a couple of hundred years sort of thing I think um, it's never been more important has it no, it's no. never absolutely and I wonder yeah like I wonder if it is just a bit overwhelming that I think that my my year 13s during the pandemic were very much, um, very much interested in what was going on and very politically minded and, um, you know, really liked to engage with that sort of thing. But I think, yeah, I think that potentially the longer it went on for, um, maybe it has had, yeah, a bit of an impact in that way. something to consider, yeah, with regards to the stretch and challenge. The other thing you said is about identifying students. And obviously it's different in different schools, in different environments. Um, And obviously, you know, I suppose in a grammar school setting, it's going to be different from maybe, or maybe not in a comprehensive, because ultimately to be doing A-levels, you've got to have certain grades at GCSE in order to get onto an A-level course. Um, I suppose there's two questions there not just particular to, to obviously your school, but how can teachers identify or how do they, especially if their students are new to you, you've taught at GCSE, those that potentially are um, able to get those sort of yeah. oh, to stretch I and challenge. That, I think you need to be aware of their starting position, the GCSE results, you know, in subjects like English and humanities, for instance. But, you know, in the, in the early days, the early lessons, I think it comes from, questioning and and checking understanding and and who is really engaged and and who is doing you know we would suggest extra reading and we we have a reading list um we're, we're aiming for all students to be engaging with that material but there will be some students who are who are who are just definitely kind of sort of showing that they are doing more or pushing themselves or going a little bit deeper or willing to um to challenge some of, you know, it's that early, we we always start with an introduction to sociology. So we'll look at norms and values and culture, and then we'll look at the big five um, theories. And I think that students who, who can be stretched are already questioning. They'll be the ones who you'll be partway through talking about functionalism, and they'll already put their hand up and say, yeah, miss, but what about? And they're already maybe kind of coming at it from more of a Marxist argument before you've explored that. So, so they have either, uh, they're just kind of yeah, well, is it politically minded or they've done extra reading, they're just more aware and they have that those kind of critical thinking skills and can apply um, their own sort of thinking and their own background as well. So for me in sociology, I think it's brilliant to have like a diverse class from different backgrounds. So although we are a grammar school, we have students in our sixth form from all different schools and we are a girls school, but we also have um, boys in our sixth form so it's a bringing together of of lots of different backgrounds and lots of different ideas where hopefully students feel safe to be able to have those conversations and and sort of challenge previous thinking and assumptions so um and as we said before i think it's the conversations that you have as well about what they're reading and what they're watching and those sorts of things i think you know as, as well as then your assessments and how they're getting on the the higher level students will be they'll just have that depth of, of analysis, right? They'll, they'll have that ability to be really thinking evaluatively as well and putting that into their writing. Yeah, definitely. Because I was thinking those quite interesting, so a couple of things there that sort of I want to sort of explore really. One was, yes, you do look at the GCSE potentially data, that's what we're, we're, you know, that's information we have all in front of us. And then there are obviously going to be some sort of mini assessments maybe to begin with different schools do different things. I know, I know some have to do diagnostics and some don't and it's all different for different schools but actually sometimes it is that more qualitative data that you get from the students like those conversations that you have with them about their relationship to to learning or their thinking or Mm -hmm. those questions that you have with those students you think oh actually they they may have not got a super high grade at GCSE and sometimes I found this I don't know if you found this but actually sometimes the students that didn't do so well with GCC do become fantastic sociology students or they have got or sometimes I've had students in the past who are really strong A-level students but I know they're going to be fantastic degree students because of the restrictions within the scheme of works because of the way that we can start the course not us but you know it's more because yeah I think that that's actually been an issue in the past with my incredibly 
you know, excellent students who just want to go beyond and you don't want to hold them back. But actually, you have to sort of say that it isn't an undergraduate essay. You, you can't, mm. you know, you have to hit the criteria. Sadly, you know, you do have to hit that, that assessment criteria. And I have had some very higher ability students who are ready for the freedom of an undergrad essay and they want to go off on a bit of a, of a tangent and that can be quite difficult kind of pulling them back and just linking to what you were just saying um sometimes students can be they identify themselves in class verbally as being um really you know deep thinkers and and politically minded and um, and they're back. They bring their background to to the lesson, and that and that's brilliant. But then their writing will need quite a bit of work. Um, uh, but I think that that's as as you were saying. Like sometimes sociology can be really good for students that that as you say may may not have got really high GCSE scores. Um, and I'm always sort of trying to explain. I'm doing this at the moment with my year twelve. Trying to explain that sociology is a new subject. They're new skills, and there's different styles of questions. You know, even just navigating your way between the difference between an outline and explain ten mark question and an outline and uh, an apply and uh, analyze question can be quite tricky. So the first six months, at least in year twelve, is really developing all of those skills. So I'm not expecting everybody's writing to be a star at that time we are developing analysis and evaluation and that is a skill that isn't always there in the beginning but certainly um can be by the end yeah definitely and i think that's, that's the interesting thing about sociology it sort of develops the skill more i think the knowledge sort of because of the way it's synoptic i think it's sort of builds upon each other and that seems to make more sense and i think this is a skill that's yeah. to do. and i've seen i've seen that the skill is a thing that seems to be more assessed more uh than just obviously knowledge you know the a01 sort of bit um I was, I was quite pleased that you sort of said uh about the safety bit and the you know so i wanted to pick up that that bit there's sort of two bits I want to pick up one is how do we how do we create a safe environment particularly where students are coming from different backgrounds if you work in a college and you've got students from all different schools back because obviously yourself it's sixth form that take from different students from different schools um as well and I think obviously I'm sort of assuming that you're saying that safety is so important because if students don't feel safe, they don't feel they want to stretch and challenge ultimately. They just would want to not take those risks. Yeah. So how to secure that safe environment? How, how do you suggest we keep um, it? It does take a while for us to build it up in our grammar school because we because we are a girls' school and because we have had student who students who have come come through the grammar school um and so the first few weeks are really important when when the students are mixing and, and some of those students might be hesitant as you say and not want to take risks so lots of group work lots of peer uh, peer work lots of scaffolding with the questions or me writing a model answer and then students writing a model answer together we i would have students write an answer as a group on big the big massive whiteboards so there's lots of of trying to sort of work together and build those ideas and then just sort of d debates and um i say sort of stimulus and and trying to make sure that the students understand it's it's safe to have different opinions and that's absolutely okay and actually that's really good in sociology because if we all had the same opinion you know basically that's what sociology is isn't it it's, it's discussing it mm pairing different opinions and then trying to see which one has the most evidence so just those classroom activities all the time trying to develop those skills but it definitely takes a little bit of time I think yeah definitely I, I think again what we talked about previously with the pandemic I think that maybe the students are maybe out of practice of those sort of social skills potentially and it's building those up as well to sort of add like you said right now that might be something we have to sort of factor in even more so that sort of collaborative working and it's it maybe even in small, small small groups in pairs initially before we sort of you know get into bigger groups to sort of collaborate to share um the other thing that you sort of talked about was um you know the sort of undergraduate students and how oh, the, not undergraduate those that have got almost like and i've seen that like i've, I've worked in different environments myself and you see the students who, wow like you know you could go from probably writing like a, a first year degree essay how do you get that balance then i suppose there's two questions i suppose it's a controversial question as well is how do you balance the that how do you want to sort of keep that fire that sort of enjoyment that want for learning without clipping their wings because ultimately you know i've got i think 
got lots of examples and one sticks into mind that you know something i know i've spoken to duncan in the past about um uh, <laughs> Duncan's of, I know that Duncan's recording this, by the way, so he's in the background for those people that are listening to the podcast. Um, but obviously, the sociology spe specifications, uh, whichever example would you work with, yes, the cultural identity talks about sexuality, but it's not really discussed in the education unit in regards to achievement with those students that uh, feel members of the like LBGT community. Um, yeah, that's but perfect you know, yeah and they want to pursue that they want to pursue yes. that they want to but then they're not going to get accredited so how do you get that balance between so that exact example, and, yeah. i had a student who was very interested in that she'd identified herself we'd identified that, the, that we were aqa um there wasn't you know this all this kind of research is missing from the aqa syllabus mm. and so she did an epq and she did her own research and she interviewed lgbtq students and trans students and um you know, she, she developed her interests in that way. In terms of keeping the students on track so that they are not gonna go off on too much of a tangent in their essays, I think that's just lots of model answers and getting them to mark and understand what the examiners really want and to play the examiner um, and mark other essays. And so, yes, you're trying to, to develop that understanding, directing them towards books to read, but then also just keep working on the, you know, the exam practice and, and trying to make sure they understand. You've got, you know, you've got breadth and depth, but you've still got to keep the depth relevant to the question and the item. And you, you know, you can't afford to, to go off too much on an area that you're just interested in for instance so i think it's um i think it's a challenge but um you know we we had yeah i think i think it's worked in the past there's only really been one student who i felt i just didn't want to be saying don't do that you know mm. i i kind of um i felt like i'm you know i didn't want to be sort of hold, holding holding them back but um they got a good result in the end so it's so, it is so hard, isn't it? It's that sort of that getting that balance, isn't it? And that's sort of thing. Well, why did you become a sociology teacher if you do want them to yeah. have that? It's the whole idea of teaching them about teaching to the test and marketization of education in the education topic, mm. and then teaching them to the test. And and that's that's you know that, that I'm kind of sort of saying we're we're looking at marketization, we're looking at policy, we're crit being critical of teaching to the test and the impact and those sorts of things. And then I'm saying, okay this is a qu exam question and this is how you're expected to lay the exam question out and this is the exam criteria but making them aware that they are part we're all part of this sort of system and and yeah you know trying trying to to get them to understand exam criteria and assessment criteria but also get the enjoyment and the love of it as well yeah it's, and that's so important isn't it it's so important even though they don't pursue social use a degree or or even go on to university uh they may choose to go to work or, or do a degree apprenticeships it's that love for learning that sort of ongoing love that will be sort of either passed down to if they choose to have families or future careers themselves or you know or just for the enjoyment do you know what I mean so yeah it's, it's a lot to think about what you get for me, one of the most satisfying things is is parents evening when the parents will say, oh, you know, so and so comes home and they've been talking about, what, you know, what, whatever topic it was we were debating in school, they'll go home and talk to their parents and they'll have arguments over the dinner table um, or you bump into a student from two, three years ago or they email you to let you know what they're doing and their, you know, their passions and how they've developed them. And I think that that's when you know that the the love of learning and the love of the subject is is there and that it's still there um you know and, and it it is beyond the exam it is beyond the grade isn't it oh definitely and i think sort of it's almost come sort of full circle uh, sort of conversation that to enable us to stretch and challenge students which is what you said at the beginning is to have that love for learning and i think if you if you can instill that early on and maintain that actually students will well, except because obviously, if you're doing something, I read something the other day, if you're happy doing it, even on holiday on the beach, 
then you'll you'll always be happy which is i suppose it's i don't want to get into that sort of toxic positivity necessarily but you know i i, I certainly feel like that about sociology i know you do i could be on yes. the beach and i, I think we find ourselves <laughs> reading books or sociology articles mm. when we're on holiday and that sort of thing for pleasure and for fun and that's exactly what what we want to inspire the students to do isn't it um i use i'm just sort of thinking in terms of tech other techniques and things i use a teams a separate teams channel for super mm. curriculum to, to direct students i've got the twitter page um i say a lot of students aren't really using twitter that much anymore so i'm using teams as well and then i would be directing them to reading and sociology review articles we have those so i might sort of set some of those for independent learning um that's where i'm going to be also posting things like the cambridge Masterclass and the pathway to bath lse lectures so we're sort of developing super curricular in that way as well and i would always want all students to be doing it but there will be some students that will be pursuing those um interests more than others um and i think that that's been working quite well as well because it's just a separate place where they can get that information from yeah definitely. Oh, i think um, sorry, go for it I was going to say, but our magazine as well. We've got the Social Science magazine. Oh, of uh, course, yes. Editions, yeah. So we've just done the third edition of that, and that's that's excellent for Stretch and Challenge for all social science students, and they get the opportunity to, to write social science-based um, articles, whether it's economics, sociology, whether it's combining. So some students that do both, they might take psychology and sociology, and then they're kind of using cross-curricular um, interests um, and and kind of academic information from from their studies to write about issues that they are um, interested in that are affecting them and then we um, publish that to years 10 to 13 so all of the students get to read it and the social science students are creating it and it's just been amazing they've done such a good job on the three editions that we've had so far uh, and we've right. had a, a and how often do they go out how often did they go? Um, we did two last year and we've done one so far this year. We had the first edition, the front page um, was a student who'd entered the Cambridge A-level photography competition. So that was another one of the sort of super curricular activities. She took an amazing photograph and she was a runner up. So that was our front page. So I think as, as well, <clears throat> in terms of bringing some of that creativity together. So sometimes it, sociology can feel like we were saying, I think you were saying the other day that the theory can, can you know, it can be sometimes quite hard to teach that, can't it, to kind of bring it mm -hmm. to life. Um, and another kind of creative activity that they've done recently was um, was a TED talk. So we split the um, education topic up and I put students into groups, gave them a topic area, gender, subject choice, etc. And they made their own TED talk. And I there was very little input from me, but they were amazing. They were just brilliant. And they really, really kind of ran with the idea. And they they made little videos with the TED talk logo and even the little bit of music and the students were presenting, but they were kind of moving around and speaking in the way that the TED talk presenters do, as well as it just being a really great way for everybody to learn and revise that information. So trying to sort of be creative. I know time and content is is an issue for all of us but every now and again trying to do something like that as well and and the you know the, the student all of the students really enjoyed that but but some of those students just ran with it you know even more which was brilliant oh definitely meeting the needs of those students that maybe like have different ways of learning uh like you said mm -hmm. and, and different skills and talents obviously you've got the the, the magazine um the ted talk ideas is amazing so i'm definitely gonna borrow some of those ideas from you magpie then um and obviously like you said that sort of the teams channel as well which i know different schools will do different things like sort of good classroom or um i know that people have like is it show my homework or something like that i think it is uh different sort of ways in which they can sort of share that information but yeah and i think it's it's it goes in it sort of becomes eventually a two-way relationship between students and, and and the students and and the teacher as well but it sounds really exciting lots of different ideas there um i like i really like the idea of the ted talk i think that'd be quite an interesting one to do sort of as a sort of revision activity where you sort of some did education some did crime um obviously depending on what other option topics you took as well um so that's super exciting they combined the facts and the statistics with the with the evaluation um and and created an argument that it was it was effectively an essay but just spoken 
Um, so yeah, I would definitely recommend that. And that, another thing I do towards the end of the course, um, there's, it's quite an old documentary. I don't know if you know it called Trouble on the Estate. Oh, Have you no, ever seen that? No. Trouble no. on the Estate. And um, it, we watch it in class and they just might, the kind of mind map. It's basically the whole course all of the concepts all the theories or the ideas statistics it's, you know it's family it's crime it's education that can be really good and then also we um have had lessons where we totally mind map we were talking about synoptic links so all the way mm. through the synoptic links are just so important for everybody but also for stretch and challenge and some of those students will get that more earlier an earlier stage and be able to apply that knowledge much earlier than other students so towards the end as a revision big 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 pieces we did it in the drama studio i booked that out once um and we had big sugar paper on the floor and everybody was we were just we just mind mapped the whole course and then wow. drew lines and arrows between everything between concepts in family and crime and education and, and all the different like research methods and it was it just took up like the whole floor of, of the oh I love that as an idea I love that really as an idea. Good. and again it, it's yeah. just it's different for something that you might do normally and then you could then lead that into practice 10 mark questions or something and those yeah. synoptic questions in family that take the two different areas so yeah. you know whether it's policies and children or policies and gender roles those sorts of synoptic links um finding ways to to develop those as well i think that's quite important oh my goodness i've got lots of ideas for you i feel like <laughs> yeah you should definitely like yeah i like these ideas uh, you definitely should what's the word i'm looking for uh copyright them potentially oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, i think me and you could talk about sociology all night i think couldn't we Oh, definitely, they definitely. Well, I'll definitely to organize some time for that, for sure. It's such oh. an interesting subject, isn't it? You oh, know, and there's definitely. there's so many different ways of of trying to to make it more exciting and, and bring it to life for the students. Oh, definitely. Oh, I'm definitely going to continue this conversation um, outside the podcast with you. Um, I feel like on a separate, we always seem to be doing something that's interesting and exciting. So I'll maybe like tag along with one of those exciting things that you do and then go, oh, do you know what? I can't join you for this. Uh, and we'll talk about sociology at the same time. Um, um, thank you for your time today. And thank you for inspiring me as well as your students. I appreciate that. Um, you definitely inspired quite a lot that I've forgotten to mention. I had a few things written down and I think I've probably forgotten um, quite a lot, but thank you for oh me. thank you no nice. thank you i do appreciate it so much thank you and have a lovely evening and thank you for your brilliant ideas and sort of your your golden nuggets of information i appreciate that thanks Kate. thank thanks. you thank you, Bye. Thank you.